with action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? Well, this is kind of a special story that I call the Santa Claus Rustlers. It began shortly before Christmas as California and I were heading back to the Bar 20 after a trail drive to southern Arizona. We were hoping to be home for the holidays, but one morning near Phoenix, my horse topper threw a shoe. And this is what it led to. Well, of all the darned luck, this takes the cake. Ah, no use grumbling about it, California. Just hand me one of those spare shoes and some nails. That's what I mean. We ain't got no spare shoes. What? But I told you that... ain't got no nails neither. California, what was the last thing I told you to do before we left Disney? Get some shoes and nails and to shut up about the heat. Well? And uh, Hoppy, remember the Christmas spirit. Besides, I didn't have no room in my saddlebags for horseshoes. No room? Of course you got room. Ah, uh, now I'll have to walk Topper clear to Phoenix to get a new shoe. Well, if it weren't for my rheumatism and my bad feet, I'd let you ride my horse, Hoppy. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> sorry you know that. <laughs> sure. Well, look, here comes a kid. Maybe there's a ranch near here where you can get a shoe. Well, for your sake, I hope so. Hi, son. How do you still? What's happening to your horse? I'm running away. My name's Billy Stowell. What's yours? Gee, ain't it hot? Want a piece of fudge? I got some here in my pocket. And... <laughs> hey, take a breath. Regular little magpie, ain't you? <laughs> I'm Hopalong Cassidy, Billy. This is my partner, California Carlson. You running away, too? Uh, no. Uh, where are you headed? I don't know. Maybe China. Maybe Phoenix. Any place where I can make some money quick. You know of anyone needing a top hand? Top hand? Hoppy. This sprout skip man-sized idea. I ain't as young as I look. Pop said my legs are beginning to bow already. I can earn anything that's got four legs. And I'll bet I can rope better than you. Slow down, Billy. Well, let's talk about this for a minute. Uh, it's a little far to China, especially without money or food. I got a pocket full of fudge. Want a piece? No, thanks. Well, now, I might just say, uh, 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 no, no thanks. Uh, Billy, you wouldn't be running away because you disagreed with your folks about something, would you? Oh, no. I got the best pop and mom in the whole wide world, even China. That's why I'm running away. I got to get some money before Christmas. So I can buy them some presents and a tree. A tree? Uh, you mean a Christmas tree? Uh-huh. They're awful sentimental, my folks. Every year they have a pine tree and presents. You know how mushy growed folks are about things like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we know, Billy. Pop ain't had no hard money for months tonight. Hey, there comes Johnny No Name. Pop just hired him last week. Wonder what he's doing coming from that away. Hiya, Johnny. Hi, you there. What's your business here? Our own, you snippy young... Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got a bum leg, Pops. But save your pity and answer my question. My gun's in good shape. It's a public road, son. We're heading home. Why? Where's that? The Bar 20. Your names? I'm Hopalong Cassidy. I'm California Carlson. Uh, what's yours? Johnny No Name, as the kid probably told you. Wouldn't wear out your brains getting curious about that, though. Curiosity makes my trigger finger itch. Now, let's have a look in those saddlebags of yours. What's that? Uh, you ain't opening my saddlebags. Why not, California? You've nothing to hide. Maybe I'm just stubborn, but my saddlebags is private. All right. I'm taking you both to the ranch. You'll open those bags there or you won't be stubborn. You'll be dead. All oh, that you're acting like you think we're outlaws. There were ten cows rustled from the east pasture of our ranch by someone. And for my money, you two are tagged as it. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Santa Claus Rustlers. On their way home, Hoppy and California are stopped near Phoenix, Arizona, first by a young boy, Billy Stilwell, who's running away. Then a bitter young rider who calls himself Johnny No Name 
and accuses Hoppy in California of being rustlers. At gunpoint, he takes them to the Stillwell Ranch, along with young Billy. Darn you, Johnny. You didn't have to make me come home, too. Shut up. Go inside and call your folks. Billy. Oh, Billy. Billy, you scared me to death. Oh, now, Ma. Don't take on so. Oh, Billy. I ain't hurted none. I just wanted to make some money so you could have a tree for Christmas. All right, kid, all right. Get your pop. Well, what is it, Johnny? Who are these men? Call themselves Cassidy and Carlson. But I'm tabbing them as a pair of rustlers. We lost ten cows this morning. No. Oh, no. Billy, do like Johnny said. Sure, Ma. Uh, Mrs. Stillwell, I can prove who and what we are. Time for that when my husband Amos gets here. You may as well get down, Johnny. Can I give you a hand, Fowler? I don't need help to get off my horse. Get away from me, I'll blow your head off. I got your gun, Johnny. Now, you young polecat, I'll... California, give it back to him. What? Uh, but, Hoppy, you heard him. He'll blow my head off. Give it back. Sure, sure. But it's going to make me feel like a ninja if he shoots me with it. Here, you drop this. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. You're welcome, I'm sure. More so if you'll pint it in some other direction than my wishbone. I'm the nervous kind. Mr. Stillwell gives me the word I'll see you have reason to be. Here's your papers, Mr. Cassidy. Looks like Johnny got ahead of himself. Uh, No harm done, Mr. Stillwell. And thanks for letting California chew my horse while we've talked. I think an apology would be in order from you, Johnny. I don't make apologies to anyone. Well, well, then I'll apologize for him. He's got a bad streak. Guess he feels the world's against him on account of that bum leg. He tries to hate everybody. That's a lot of hate. A man can get sick doing that. Yeah. Well, I suppose I can't complain, no. Johnny's the only rider I've found who'll work for delayed wages. Well, maybe he has a reason. This rustling hit you hard? Eh, hard enough. Not only me, but my partners. Partners? Yeah, I guess I'd better explain. It's an unusual setup. When I bought this ranch a few years ago, I only had enough left over to buy 50 head of stock. So Ma and Betty, my daughter, they agreed to sacrifice something to help me get a herd. Ah, uh, you got a fine family. Yeah, I sure have. Ma sold her heirlooms, and Betty gave up going east to school. You see, I'd set aside a little money regular for her to do that. But when the pinch came, Betty tossed it into the pot without even asking me. I see. And we like to consider the herd as belonging to each of us in equal shares. Makes Ma and Betty feel like they have a part in things. And make the, uh, Billy might become a partner when he grows up. <laughs> well, if there's anything left. I'd like to get my hands on the rustlers who'd steal from a family like yours just before Christmas. Yeah, I guess our holidays ain't going to be too bright. No trees, no presents, nothing but a little good wishing. Market's too low to sell now. Sure, that's it. Cows are bringing a bear ten dollars a head. If we can just hold out till spring, well, we can get double that. If it were just me, I'd sell a few, but I got to think of the others. No, I reckon this Christmas will just be a poor one. <laughs> Hoppy, darn it all, if we keep fooling around trying to track down these rustlers, we're going to miss Christmas at home. You can go ahead if you want to, California. Me, I've got a mad on. Yeah, yeah, I know. Stealing from nice folks like them Stillwells, it's downright wrong. What polecat would be mean enough to... to, to, Uh, Hoppy, I know a polecat who'd be... So do I. Let's not go jumping at any conclusions yet. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, what's the matter? Look tracks of the rustled cattle lead right into those other tracks. We've lost them. Hello there. What do you think you're doing? What? Oh, well, I guess you must be uh, Betty Stillwell. So you're a good guesser. Answer me. Well, give us a chance. We're trailing some cattle that were rustled from you. Anybody ask you to? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. Your father. My name's Cassidy. This is California Carlson. Oh. (laughs) So you must think I'm pretty awful jumping on you like that. Reckon I'm edgy. You knew about the cattle? Oh, Johnny rode over to tell me about them this morning. I was banding some calves on the North Range. You were sure of what? Uh, but you were a girl. Oh, I'll bet you I can beat you at calf roping, grizzle push. Uh, grizzle push? <laughs> grizzle push? <laughs> Why, darn it all, I shaved only last week. And there ain't no gal who can beat me calf roping. The day a gal does that, I'll shave clear down to the skin. <laughs> Oh, 
No. Hoppy, do I have to? That was the bargain, Grizzle Puss. And she beat you by ten seconds. I know, but Hoppy, uh, how did I know she was a Rodeo champion? Shave. Yeah. But I'll feel naked. Do I tell them back at the bar 20th that a girl beat you at, uh... <laughs> See you at dinner. Ouch. Ooh. Ain't no reason for a man to have to do this know-how. <clears throat> it's plumb brutal. Doggone me, if I cut myself once more, my face is going to fall apart. Why don't you try sawing them whiskers with Applejack? Heard about your match with Betty. You catch them rustlers? She beat you by ten seconds, huh? Look out, you're cutting yourself. Oh, ouch. Thanks for telling me. Yeah, Betty beat me by ten seconds. No, we didn't catch no rustlers. And why don't you go kiss a rattlesnake? Say, you're a gabby one, ain't you? Pass the soap. <laughs> Ma, I'm sorry about making you worry today. Pass the fritters. I just wanted to get some presents on a tree. How about you, Johnny? You getting presents? Presents, presents. That's all any of you think about. Look, do me a big favor. Skip me on this malarkey. I'm past believing in Santa Claus. Well, gee, if we had a tree and, and presents on a party like we usually do, you'd see, Johnny. It ain't only Santa Claus. Besides, I'm going to give you a present. You, you what? What for? Because I like you, I guess. Don't you like me? Why? Well, yeah, all this drivel makes me sick. Well, gee. Uh, Mrs. Gee. Stillwell, uh, maybe there's something we can do. After all, a tree isn't much. Oh, Jake Hammer freights them in from the mountains at ten dollars apiece. We don't have ten cents, and we don't hold with borrowing or charity. Thanks, just the same, Mr. Cassidy. I wish we had the cows back that were rustled. They'd pay for a tree and plenty of presents. Mr. Stillwell, about that rustling, do you suspect any of your neighbors? Well, no. They're nice folks, most of them. But not all. I have an idea whoever's behind this rustling will strike again if we don't stop him. Yeah, that makes it tough. We've only got a small herd, but it's scattered all over a lot of range. As you could tell, it takes plenty of this scrubby land to feed one cow. And with only Ma and me and Betty and Johnny, well, we, we just can't protect them. You mean Mrs. Stillwell rides herd? Sure I do. In betwixt getting food ready, that is. We make out all right. At least we did until them cow thieves began. And that's why we appreciate your help, Mr. Cassidy. But, of course, you have your own business to attend to, so I guess you'll be... Uh, we'll stick for a while and forget the wages. If we can make your holidays better by recovering your cattle, that'll be pay enough. You have more to recover than you think. Hey, Betty girl, where have you been? Supper's nearly cold. I took a turn through Gopher Basin, Pa. That bunch of cows there was left alone too long. The rustlers have hit us again. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story... The Santa Claus Rustlers. Trying to track down the rustlers preying on the Stillwell family, Hoppy and California lost the trail of the rustled herd. But that same evening, Betty Stillwell came in with the news that the rustlers had struck again. The family, despondent at the prospect of a Christmas without a tree or presents, react in grim determination. Billy. Put down that rifle. Oh, but, Pop, I'm a-going with you. You're a-going to stay here and take care of the ranch. Yes, Ma. Ma, you and Betty ought to stay here, too. Now, there's likely to be a passel of shooting if we catch up with them wrestlers. I stood beside you to fight Injuns, Amos still Stillwell, and I reckon the same applies to low-down cow thieves. Where's Johnny No Name? He claimed to be good with a gun. I saw him taking off for town. <laughs> he said he was going to pickle Santa Claus. If that ain't like the darn varmint. Got plenty of meanness, except when we need a little. Never mind, California. Let's go, Mr. Stillwell. Yeah. Hoppy, this trailing by moonlight, uh, just don't get it. We've lost the tracks eight times already. Oh, let's go back. I know. I'm worried about having the women folk with us, too. When we hit those rocks ahead of us, we're not only going to lose the trail for good, but we're going to be in danger of an ambush. Cassidy, you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm afraid so. What are you afraid of? Oh! 
Now, take cover. Behind those rocks. Get down. Hey. Oh, you and Betty sneak back as soon as that cloud crosses the moon. Now, this time I'm ordering. Ma, please go back. For me, honey. Betty, you got any spare shells? Sure, Ma, here. I wish Johnny was here. He'd save us. Uh, I ain't so sure that he ain't here. Still, well, you notice where those shots went? And I was too busy ducking. Why? Either that rifleman is the world's worst shot or we're only being warned not to go on. He missed us by 50 yards. Yeah, well, he'll wish he'd hit us before I get through with him. Well, if Moore wasn't with us, we could... Uh, I uh, reckon they've got us outnumbered, eh, Cassidy? Uh, we'd best go back. Go back? Why, Huffy, we can... Uh, uh, hey, you poked me. Uh, yeah, you're right. We have to go back. <laughs> You and Betty go on inside. Oh, Cassidy, you're not this morning, are you? What are you planning? <laughs> ah, that rifleman is long gone by now. We're just taking a little jaunt into town. Oh, I think I savvy what's biting you. Only I hope you're wrong somehow. Uh, perhaps I am. The only way is to find out for sure. Adios. Hoppy, now will you kindly tell me what fur we let that low-down ambusher get away without a fight? <laughs> Didn't you see the look in Mrs. Stillwell's eyes? If we hadn't gotten her away fast, she'd have charged that rifleman single-handed. Joe oh, Gormy, I bet you're right. Say, I'll bet she made some engine fighter. I have a feeling we'll find our bushwhacker in town anyway. We'll make a stop at the livery stable first. Then Johnny No Name is going to do a little talking. <laughs> Hoppy, now we know that Johnny No Name was riding hard and late, and his gun's been shot recently. It looks plenty bad for him, but we'll see. Here's the hotel. Man at the livery stable said he was in room two. Shouldn't we get the sheriff, Hoppy? Not yet. I want some answers first. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, what? Cassidy. Now, leave me alone. Back up, Johnny. It's time to break down and tell me uh, all your little secrets. You can't threaten me. Want to bet? Well, we've been doing some shopping, huh? Hoppy, he's bought new boots. And look at a rifle and a gold watch. He sure didn't wait long to spend the money. Let me see those boots. Get away from them. They're mine. I paid for them. Nice leather. You've been spending a lot of money for a rider who's working for delayed wages. What business is it of yours what I spend? None. But those slugs you threw around this evening are. You can't prove a thing. Can't I? I think this little visit has told me nearly all I want to know. Come on, California. See you back at the ranch, Johnny. You keep quiet about this, Cassidy, or... <laughs> What's the matter, California? Hoppy, hey, sometimes you make me so mad I could bite through a cinchering. We go in there to brace that Henri Coyote for being a low-down bushwhacker. Oh, and... he's the one who took those shots at us, all right. Then you say, as nice as you please, see you back at the... the... <laughs> he is. Oh, now, Hoppy, will you make up your mind? I'm gonna go back there. Oh, no, you won't, California. I think I know what's going on and who's behind it. But I don't have any real proof. So we're gonna wait and let it come to us. <laughs> but Johnny knows we're on to him now. Huh. I suppose you think there's going to be another rustling. Exactly. Another rustling, and so what do we do? We sit here stringing popcorn. <laughs> and eating it. Besides, we tracked the rustler, didn't we? That's what's driving me loco. Sure, we tracked him. Right back to the ranch here. And, and as if he was smart about it. In fact, he he's about the stupidest rustler I ever saw. Maybe. Finish that string. What are we waiting for? We can hang Johnny today. I guess maybe we could at that. Well, then what in thunderation are we doing here? Stringing popcorn. Ready to start another string? I, I'm darn near ready to start another civil war. <laughs> Stick to the popcorn. These strings have to be ready in time for the party tonight. Yeah, yeah. And uh, speaking about the party, that mesquite bush Mrs. Stillwell fixed up sure don't look like no Christmas tree. Uh, couldn't we sneak off and get a pine tree from Jake Hammer? I talked to him yesterday while we were in town buying our gifts. 
He doesn't have any good ones left. Gosh, no present, except in ours. No Christmas tree. Nothing but rustling and more rustling. Uh, well, uh, I know one way I can brighten up the Stillwell's Christmas party. <clears throat> I'll sing for him. You what? Uh, sing for him. You know, Christmas songs and all kinds of... California, uh, you ruin their party with that noise you call singing, and I'll see that you wash every dish afterwards by yourself. Now, what do you think of that? Pass the popcorn. <laughs> Amos, it, it's dark. Instead of just sitting on the porch, don't you think you ought to take a walk before the party? Just the thing, Ma. I guess I'd better go tell Johnny to hurry up. Yeah. Maybe, I, maybe I'd better take a check on the horses. Have some more popcorn, Mr. Carlson? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> California, you're going to turn into a popcorn bull if you don't stop. Now it's Christmas time. Let him eat all he wants. <laughs> well, I think I'll go look in on the hens. Yeah, well, California and I are going to slick up a bit, aren't we? Uh, you go ahead, Hoppy. I already... Uh, oh, uh, why, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, Mr. Stillwell. <laughs> Take a handful of popcorn with you. <laughs> now, if you insist, that's a good idea. <clears throat> Let's go, Hoppy, huh? <laughs> After all the popcorn you ate this afternoon, how can you eat more? Of course I like it. <clears throat> Say, ain't this slick. Everybody getting out of the house at once. <clears throat> now we can put our gifts under the tree and surprise them. This party may be a surprise in lots of ways. We're setting a trap in the Stillwell house. Uh a uh, what? A trap? Yeah, we'll sneak back into the house as soon as we can. If I'm right, we'll catch those rustlers red-handed tonight. Well, I'm ready for them. But gosh, it's dark in the parlor here. Keep that lamp ready to light when I say to. Sure. Say, Hobby, can I even sing one little song at the party? No. I'm quiet. Someone's coming in. Now, California, we cut our rustlers. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Great green eyed bingo. Hoppy, it's a forest. Three rustlings, three trees, plus the one Billy brought. Jake Hammer's gonna let me work out the price of this one. I didn't also know. Oh my gosh, in the morning. You mean it. <laughs> That's right, Billy. Your folks and your sister are the Santa Claus rustlers. Each one took from his own share of the herd. Well, I'd have told about it after the surprise. Sure, so would your partners, Betty. Well, I didn't want Ma and you to suffer the penalty of the low cattle market, Betty. You all thought alike, Mr. Stillwell. The fact that each rustling was the same size gave me a hunch. And Jake Hammer confirmed it when he told me how each of you bought a tree. Then I checked the stores. For people with no money, you spent plenty. But, Hobby, uh, what about that Johnny No Name? His shooting was only to warn us back. He was afraid we'd discover what he knew. That Betty took that gopher basin herd. Uh, but those things she bought in town... They look like gifts to me, but let's ask him. I heard. Thanks for backing me, Mr. Cassidy. Come in, Johnny, but better leave the tree. It's kind of crowded. I um, knew you had a change of heart when I saw those boots you bought. They were way too small for you. They're for me. I'll bet they're for me. Ain't they, Johnny? <laughs> yeah, kid, they're for you. But before I give any presents, you all should know I'm Johnny Bent, son of an outlaw. Was it outlaw money you spent on those presents? Oh, no, sir. It was honest. Every penny of it. Well, then get Billy his boots before he busts the valve. <laughs> and if you got any more money, maybe we'll talk about letting you into our partnership. This ranch is kind of short on cows right now. Gosh, Hoppy, this is going to be some swell Christmas party. 
I, uh, oh, I sure wish you'd let me sing for everybody. California, I warned you. Why, that sounds wonderful. Go ahead, Mr. Carlton. Yeah, go Gee, ahead, uh, California. Come on now. Gee, you see, Hoppy, uh, they want me. They oh, are. all right. Hand me the popcorn bowl and go ahead. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, me, 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 me. Uh, <clears throat> Sir! California, what's the matter? That popcorn. My voice is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> and there's only one thing left to say. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Merry Christmas, Christmas everybody. everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry sure was an extra special Christmas story about real nice people with a lot of real Christmas spirit. And just as Hoppy said, there's only one thing left to say. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Don't miss the next thrilling adventure with Hopalong Cassidy. <laughs> Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Santa Claus Rustlers was written by Herb Purdom, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.